snowflakes falling, church bells calling. It's Christmas time again. Snowflakes, stockings, church bells calling. Snowflakes, stockings, church, church, church. Of which means eggnog is all over the shelves at your local grocery stores and even at some of your local gas stations, which doesn't always also carry vegan eggnog, unfortunately. And not everyone wants to be consuming cow secretions and cholesterol-filled artery-clogging eggs, which is an eggnog, unfortunately. Vegan eggnog isn't the always, isn't the always, isn't always the easiest thing to find. So I came up with three eggnog recipes that are completely vegan and free of cholesterol and cow secretions, and they're so good. But I did a bunch of recipe testing. So if you want to learn how to make those, please keep on watching. You need one cup of plant milk. I prefer unsweetened because you're going to add a sweetener in this recipe unless you choose to not add a sweetener and you just want to use your sweetened plant milk, then that's perfectly fine. You also need three tablespoons of chia seeds three tablespoons of any sweetener of your choice. I chose maple syrup one-fourth teaspoon of vanilla, a pinch of ginger, a pinch of cinnamon, and one-fourth teaspoon of salt. In a sealable jar or container, I prefer glass, which is why jars are great because you can reuse the ones you get at the grocery store that used to have food in them and it's eco-friendly and you're recycling them right there on the spot. Then in your sealable jar, add chia seeds, Add ginger, add cinnamon, and add salt. I suggest you stir together those four dry ingredients before adding the liquids, which I clearly forgot to do, but I meant to do because that's the best thing to do. Then add in your plant milk, sweetener, and vanilla. Stir all of the ingredients together until there are no clumps stuck to the inside of the jar. Refrigerate for at least three hours or even better overnight so the chia seeds gel up and become a pudding. Take the chia seed pudding out of the fridge and you can either eat it as is in the container or jar that you refrigerated in or you can serve it in some nice glasses. I reused these candle holders so not only did I reuse the jar, I also am reusing these candle holders. Be eco friendly you guys. or you can top it off with some vegan cocoa whip. If you want the recipe, let me know because I would love to share it with you guys. It's so easy to make and everyone has access to these ingredients. Or you can get vegan whipped cream in a can or in the frozen section or refrigerated section if you have that at your local grocery store. Either way, with or without the vegan whipped cream, sprinkle some nutmeg on top because I wanted to incorporate it in this recipe somehow, but when I put it in the pudding itself, it wasn't so good like I said, so that's why it's so good just sprinkled on top and not mixed in. But if you mix it in slightly, then it's fine. I don't know, maybe it's just something to do with it sitting there overnight or for a few hours in the pudding. I don't know, it's just weird, but on top, it's so good together.
I absolutely hate chia seed kombucha. It is so gross, or just chia seed in any kind of liquid beverage. It is so gross and slimy and like still watery at the same time. I hate it, but I absolutely love chia seed pudding. It is so good and it's good for you, even though I can't have that much because as you can tell, well, it's kind of hard to tell with like lighting and makeup. Well, makeup actually brings it out more. But it's hard to tell with the lighting, my skin texture, but I really, really can't because it does not agree with me. I don't know what's wrong with me, but this is just what happens when I consume fat. Dr. Hoshka, that's who was, like he's, he does skincare. Well, he probably does other things. I don't know. But Dr. McDougall talks about this a lot, about how fat can affect acne. And it's just, it, ugh, my texture on my skin. It doesn't look that bad right now. This is like a whole different thing. We're talking about cheesy pudding and I'm talking about the texture of my skin. Well, it's kind of like chia seeds. It's like all bumpy and rough. That's my skin when I eat chia seeds, unfortunately. But they're still really, really good for you if you don't have that problem that I have and most people don't have that problem. But I absolutely love chia seed pudding and I wish I could have it all the time every single morning for breakfast and I can make it the night before. I wish I could do that. And with this recipe, I know it's like a basic chia seed pudding. It's not really eggnoggy and it's not special at all. But trust me, I tried putting eggnog spices in the pudding and it was so gross. I tried it three different times and three different ways, obviously, because I tried it three different times. And it was so gross. I don't know what was wrong with it. It was just too much and I only added a pinch of each thing. So I clearly just went pretty basic with this one, but you could also, instead of doing this, just get some vegan eggnog and then do like a cup of that with a few tablespoons of chia seeds and then do it that way. But if you want to make it more healthy and a lot simpler, or if you just don't have vegan eggnog in your area, just make this recipe. I don't know what was up with adding those spices. It was really, really weird. They totally took over. The cinnamon is fine and the ginger is fine. I know that's a little more gingerbread, but it was the most festive that I could make it and the closest to eggnog that I can make it. And also, if you want a cocoa whip recipe, I would love to make a video on that because it is so easy and so fun. And it's great if you also don't have any vegan whipped cream in your area. And it's also a lot more zero waste than using an aerosol can or anything like that. Or for people who don't have access to vegan whipped cream, like a lot of us don't. Well, I do, but still, I don't want the aerosol can thing, even though it's so fun. Oh my God, the texture, the consistency, the whole experience with the aerosol can is so fun, but it's not the most environmentally friendly. I'm gonna keep doing my cocoa whip thing and maybe I'll make a video on that if you want me to. You need two cups plant milk. I always go with unsweetened. You also need one teaspoon lacuma powder, one tablespoon sweet mesquite powder, one teaspoon maca powder, three-fourths teaspoon of vanilla, one tablespoon plus two teaspoons of coconut sugar or any preferred vegan sweetener, and you also need a pinch of nutmeg, a pinch of cloves, and three-fourths of a teaspoon of cinnamon. In a pot, heat up plant milk to however warm or hot you want it. Then in a blender, add warm or hot plant milk. Add vegan sweetener. Add sweet mesquite powder. Add lacuma powder. Add maca powder. Add vanilla. Add nutmeg. Add cloves. And add cinnamon. And now you 
can blend your concoction. You can use any kind of blender for this. You don't need like a high speed, high powered blender because it's just a bunch of liquids and powders. There's no frozen fruit or anything like that. And for this, I'm using my favorite new blender, the Kasori. I'm obsessed with it. They actually sent it to me and I was kind of skeptical because it is compared to the Vitamix. And so is this other blender that I have that just like fell apart and I don't like the way that it's constructed. But this blender is actually constructed just like the Vitamix and it works just the same. Not as good, but for the price, it's totally worth it. I'm obsessed. If you want to check it out, I left a link in the description. <laughs> Now serve your blended concoction in a giant latte cup or in two cups and enjoy this yummy latte that has healing benefits. made this recipe while trying to come up with like a caramel latte. I posted on Instagram and I got so many requests for the recipe. That's actually what inspired this whole entire video because it was eggnog themed. Oh my god, I could make a whole entire, rather than just like one specific recipe for one video. That's just not good enough. So that's why this video consists of three recipes because of this recipe that sparked it all but it is so good and I know it's not the most relatable because it has a bunch of superfoods that you probably have never heard of because I know until like the last two years or so I've never heard of either. I love all these superfoods so much and I love this latte specifically because it's really really healing and I know it can get expensive as superfoods can be. What? But that's why I always go to TJ Maxx or Marshalls for superfoods. You don't always know what they're going to carry. They usually have some superfoods. I keep on saying superfoods. It's so annoying, but what else am I going to call it? But they usually do have like maca and lacuma and sweet mesquite powder for super affordable. And it makes me so excited when I find it because I don't expect it. It's not like a grocery store when you know they're going to have it. Look at this price for certified organic maca powder. Deals on these superfoods that usually get so expensive. It's ridiculous. Also, chia seeds, a lot of people say, get so expensive, but look at this price. $12.99 for this huge bag, or $5.99 for a 16 ounce bag. That's crazy. But if you don't have a TJ Maxx or a Marshalls in your area, or you do, but they don't carry these items, then I left links in the description box to the most affordable ones online, so you can just get them shipped to your doorstep, and you don't have to search for them, or hunt for them, or anything crazy and wild like that. If you do get those weird powders, like mesquite, and lacuma, and maca, uh, well, make sure you get sweet mesquite because other mesquites are like smoky, I think. So you want the sweet one. But if you do get those, you don't have to just put them in this latte and then be stuck with it. And you're like, great. So it should just like got me into these stupid superfoods that were kind of pricey, but also kind of affordable, but like pricey because I don't really need it except for this recipe and I don't want to make it again until next year or whatever it may be. You can also put it in smoothies, put it, there's several powders. You can also put them in smoothies or tonics or even like baking. You can do a lot with them. So if you do get them, make sure you use them. Look up other recipes and figure out how to incorporate them in them. For this recipe, you need one can of coconut cream. Make sure it's full fat and not light, and also make sure that it's unsweetened. And you want to refrigerate it overnight so that the cream and the liquid separate. You also need half a cup of unsweetened plant milk. I really love the unsweetened vanilla almond milk from Whole Foods' 365 brand because it tastes like Nella wafers. Along with that, you need three to four teaspoons of vanilla, three and a half to four tablespoons of vegan sweetener, half a teaspoon of cinnamon, half a teaspoon of nutmeg, one fourth teaspoon of cloves, and one fourth teaspoon of salt. With a can of coconut cream, separate the cream from the liquid. You don't want the liquid, you just want that full fat cream, and the cream comes out to be about one cup. In a bowl, add coconut cream, and add plant milk. 
Whisk those two ingredients together until completely smooth. You want to make sure that there are no chunks like this. Add vanilla. Then add your sweetener. Add nutmeg, add cloves, add cinnamon, and add salt. Whisk until all of the ingredients become one. Now, in cups, I prefer glass cups for this recipe especially because they look so good together. I don't know. And you can add ice too. I think that just adds to it even more and the chicness and the crystalliness with the eggnog. I just love it. I found these high-end businessman working at the top floor in a city building who occasionally drinks over ice over ice, I don't know what I'm saying. I don't know anything about alcohol. On the job, ice cube trays at Marshalls. Do people really put ice cubes in their alcoholic beverages? That's what I imagine, and he owns the whole entire building. If I was writing a screenplay, that's the character, or at least that's one of the characters that I would come up with. Like the other recipes, I chose to sprinkle some more nutmeg over the top because it just screams nog, vegan nog, veg nog, veg nog, yeah. But it's not vegan, so it would be vegan nog over the vegan nog. This recipe is your classic eggnog. It is so perfect and it's so much healthier. Well, actually, it's actually healthy because the other version, either if it's vegan or not, it still isn't that healthy. The vegan one is a lot healthier than the non-vegan one, but the non-vegan one is not even healthy at all whatsoever to begin with. But this version is so much healthier than any other eggnog that you'll find at the stores. And also, if you're not an eggnog fan like me, you'll love it. And and if you are an eggnog fan like my mom, you'll also love it. So it is really, really good and it's really easy to make. So simple and it's the best when it's really, really cold with ice cubes. And I love these ice cubes because I got them from Marshalls. Well, I didn't get the ice cubes from Marshalls. I got the ice cube trays for Marshalls and they just remind me of a high-end businessman who like works several stories up in a big office which he owns and he's the CEO and he drinks from these glasses like what are those glasses that are like shallow but they're just like really masculine and they're big and they're all glass and they're wide and they're rounded and then there's like huge ice cubes in them and I think they drink bourbon out of them I don't know they drink on the job but it's like classy you know what I mean and he's like in the city working and like that's just what they remind me of just really cool masculine big ice cubes they're just really really fun and I have to get them for this video not them I had to get the ice cube trays to make them for this video because I just felt like they were so fitting for eggnog and festive and like just high-end in Hallmark good Hallmark and I love them but anyway this recipe is so fun to make and it's great because it's a very very classic eggnog recipe and the consistency is on point also about this eggnog that I made in particular it doesn't have that weird eggy sulfur aftertaste that you usually will get from eggnog that isn't vegan so easy, so accessible, great thing to make around the holidays or year-round. This is just a thing to make <laughs> for the kids, for the family, for the folks, for the neighbors. 
Like I said in the beginning of this video, a lot of you watching this video unfortunately don't have access to vegan eggnog. And that's not so unfortunate because you can make these recipes and you have the exact same effect. Plus, these recipes are so much healthier than any eggnog that you'll ever find on the shelves, even the vegan ones. So these are fun to make, they're easy, they're simple, and if you do make them, let me know in the comments how they went or tag me on Instagram in a photo or tweet me with a photo or just tweet me telling me how they went because I would love to hear from you and I would also love to see how they turn out. And like this video if you like it, subscribe. If you want to subscribe and let me know what you think about this video, let me, well, I forgot notification button, but hit the notification button if you want to as well after you subscribe or if you're already subscribed, make sure to hit that notification button. The Santa Claus brings two good little girls and